often in astronomy, especially when you're new to astronomy, looking for new targets to find in the night sky. You usually rely on constellations to do what's called star hopping, to find those uh, harder to find targets. And it's, it's not very often that the, uh, the, <laughs> that the constellations look anything like what they're meant to resemble, making that a little bit more harder to find these it's sometimes elusive targets. Well, in today's video, both the constellation that helps us to find the target and the target itself actually resemble to a certain uh, degree what they're actually supposed to look like. And better still, these are available almost all year round. Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. First off, guys, apologies for being sat down. Um, I'm, I'm not being lazy or anything like that. I do have a bad back from uh, time to time, and uh, today it's, it's pretty bad. I don't know whether I don't know. I don't know whether I've uh, pulled a muscle or trapped a nerve or sciatica starting or what it is, but it's very uncomfortable to stand up at the minute. But uh, anyway, so that's why I'm sat down. So uh, yeah, this, uh, the cart, uh, the cart, <laughs> getting me words tattled up, I haven't even started the video, at least I haven't got anything in my hands to drop today. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Cotanger cluster. Uh, now, this is one of those uh, fun little clusters, uh, and it's one of those uh, things that I had no idea was, was a, a, even existed for a good three to four years into the hobby, and I just overheard or saw it somewhere, and I went, what? There's a little cluster that looks like a coat hanger? I must find immediately. And uh, and, it's, and uh, it's one of those targets as well that's um, really easy to find, and you, you say to yourself, how did I not, how have I missed this before, you know? Now. Um, so without further ado, let's let, let me show you how to find it first. Uh, and like I say, you have no trouble finding this one at all. Right, first off, you need to find Aquila the Eagle. Now go to Aquila's dominant star, which is Altair. Okay. Now from Altair, what you want to do is just go straight up. All right. And what you can do is you will see um, our next little finder. Um, constellation which is going to be Sagitta. Now Sagitta or Sagitta, however you want to pronounce it, does actually resemble something of what it's supposed to look like which is an arrow. Uh, if we just put the um, we'll put the label back on uh, sorry the drawings and you can see that it does sort of resemble an arrow. <laughs> okay now it's these one, two, three, four, five stars that we're looking that will make up Sagita. Okay, now if you keep going from this top star here, uh, I'll just zoom in a bit, make it easier. This top star, which is called Sham, okay, the top of the flight, if you like, and I'll just zoom out a little bit there. We go up a little bit more. You're going to come to this other faintish star here, which is a very complicated constellation, as you can see, of Vulpecula, uh, which is just two stars. <laughs> How they get a fox from that, I'll never know. Still, still, still baffles me that. Okay, uh, if we just zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so we've got our top flight star, Sham. And this star here, Alpha Vulpeculi, okay? Now, this distance here between, sorry, this distance here between these two stars, if we go roughly about midway, okay? And now we just need to move slightly to the right. And as you can see, if I zoom in here, this right here is the Cotanger. Now, it doesn't look very exciting on uh, Stellarium, <laughs> admittedly. But trust me, I mean, I mean, I've turned the magnitude down a little bit of the stars in the settings just so it'll stand out a little bit more. But this is the constellation. Trust me, when you see this visually, it really does pop out and uh, it, it's going to look a lot better than it does actually shown here. But there you go. There's how to find the Cotanger cluster. Uh, start off, like I say, I'll just quickly, from Altair. So we go from Altair, we move up a little bit, we find Sagitta, the arrow. And from Sagitta, we keep going up again. Follow these two little um, 
uh, stars here as a, as a guider to come up to uh, Alpha Vulpeculi there. Okay, midway in between of those two stars and slightly to the right is the Kotanga Cluster. When you're looking for the Kotanga Cluster, uh, make sure that you're using a low-powered eyepiece. And even better than actually using a telescope is to look for it with a pair of binoculars. Um, this, is, this is where you're going to get the best views, actually, because you're going to get the entire cluster in a pair of binoculars, where telescopes have a lot narrower field of view um, and it's not a particularly big cluster but it's not a small cluster either and uh, binoculars are definitely going to give you the best view so if you've got a pair of these lying around grab these to uh, find the coat hanger now while you're there um, there's another little interesting target to have a look now we've already had a look at Sagittarius or Sagittarius or however you want to pronounce it um, now bang in the center of Sagittarius there is a Messier target, uh, M71. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge for you, I'll be honest. And it's a good test for your eye vision, uh, your light pollution conditions, your optics on your telescope, if you like. Because if you can actually get a glimpse of this one, you're doing well. Um, I mean, Messier saw it all back in 17, whatever. Uh, but you've got to remember, and, and with the inferior telescopes, I can guarantee you to what you'll be probably using. Uh, but the the differences back in Messier's day is he was there was very little or none of, no light pollution at all. I mean the skies must have looked absolutely fantastic back in his day. So it is a very faint one, this one, but it's a globular cluster that's banging the centre, if you like, of uh, as uh, Sagittarius. So go and give this one a go. Well, like I say, it'll be a proper test. Uh, while looking for M71, you're better off actually using the averted eye technique, which I've talked about before in other videos. Now that's just simply the corner of the eye, okay? Like like if you looked straight at me and then held your hand up here you can still see your hand but yet you can still see me if you get what I mean that's what that's what I mean by using your averted vision uh, what this does is it activates what's called the rods in our eyes which are responsible for low light and uh, they, they'll uh, really bring out if you do get a glimpse of it the more fainter little stars in the cluster like I say it is going to be a challenge but it's uh, it's worth having a look while you're in that area well, there you go for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like this type of content. Do you like uh, me doing more? Do you want me to see more videos of finding things in the night sky? Because I have got a few more planned because there's uh, loads of things up there. You know, I mean? there's a never-ending amount of videos uh, of things to see in the night sky. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to uh, hit that thumbs up button because that's the one that counts. That's the one that notifies YouTube's algorithm to uh, notify my channel on other people's channel so we can spread the amazing word of astronomy to everybody. <laughs> well, in the meantime, guys, go and find yourself a co in the sky and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.